Hello, my name is Dr. David Allen. I'm a retired cardiac surgeon and a member of the International Cannabinoid Research Society, ICRS. That means I'm a cannabinoid research scientist. And uh, I'm here to tell you about the discovery of the endocannabinoid system, the ECS, and uh, the significance and how it was, will change medicine. And uh, we discovered the endocannabinoid system about 30 years ago and we really didn't understand the significance of its discovery and so uh, we we found out that this is a chemical communication that your body has it's not electrical it's chemical and it's kind of like uh, the hormone systems that that people are familiar with and your body makes these uh, cannabinoids they're endogenous so they're endocannabinoids and they uh, perform some miraculous uh, functions in the body. And we're just learning the significance of these, of these functions. And basically, uh, the endocannabinoid system is responsible for homeostasis. Most people don't understand what that really means, but it, 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 it's, uh, it's the body's ability to maintain itself and function in the proper environment. And so it's, it's critically important that, uh, that doctors in the future understand this control mechanism. And we're finding out that, they, uh, that manipulation of this endocannabinoid system will control diabetes, it controls cancer, uh, it controls whether you can survive a heart attack or stroke. And so this is uh, uh, critically important for doctors to understand this new science and uh, the discovery of the endocannabinoid system is the single most important medical scientific discovery uh, ever and will, will save more lives than the discovery and application of sterile surgical technique. And I'm a heart surgeon saying that. So more people will be saved by uh, manipulation of the endocannabinoid system than are currently saved by, by surgery. Um, but recent research has been looking at cannabis and the, the different cannabinoids. There's over 80 plus cannabinoids discovered in the cannabis plant. The second most dominant one besides THC is cannabidiol or CBD. Okay. And the research now is over 1,200 peer-reviewed journals on CBD. It's probably the most exciting and researched ingredient or substance right now around the world. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have the psychoactive or high that is associated with THC but it has a tremendous amount of other benefits, um, including uh, research shows uh, anti-seizure, anti-epileptic, which is why it's gotten a lot of popularity. You do a lot with children with seizure disorders and they're getting benefits from this plant in a safe, non-toxic way versus all these drugs that typically don't work. Mm -hmm. And um, there's neuroprotective benefits, so you see a lot with concussions and the NFL, there's a lot of research being done now mm -hmm. with uh, chronic traumatic encephalopathy or chronically banging your head a lot. Um, is anti-anxiety, which is really important. It's the anti-THC of sorts. It calms you down. It helps you manage stress better, which is how I look at it. It's much more as a preventative or daily use substance than just treating disease states. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's immune support. There's uh, it's a huge antioxidant. There's just a tremendous. It's easier sometimes to talk about what it doesn't do yeah. than what it does. Dr. Alan Shackelford is a Harvard-trained physician. He's also among a handful of doctors in Colorado who give prescriptions for medical marijuana. From the moment Charlotte entered his office, he knew she was in trouble. While he was just examining her, she had two seizures. She'd failed everything. Uh, there were no more options for her. Everything had been tried, except cannabis. Here's how scientists think it might work. Marijuana is made up of two ingredients. THC, that's the psychoactive part that makes you high, and CBD, also called cannabidiol. It's the CBD that scientists think modulates electrical and chemical activity to help quiet the excessive activity in the brain that causes seizures. I've been telling my patients to cut. Dr. Julie Holland is the editor of The Pot Book, a complete guide to cannabis. For a long time, the work on cannabis and epilepsy was sort of inconclusive. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. They couldn't quite figure it out. And it's only when they really started separating THC from CBD that they saw, you know, definitively, yes, CBD seems to really stop seizures. So 
in the 1930s, they made tinctures. What were they making the tinctures for, and why were they doing these tinctures? Well, well I mean, the medicinal uses of hemp are, are just numerous. The hemp helps, well, we can talk about the cancer effects of hemp, but it helps with inflammation. It's very anti-inflammatory. It helps with seizures. It's very effective with PTSD for the vets that are coming back that have post-traumatic uh, traumatic stress, stress disorder. disorder. Mm -hmm. Very effective at treating that. Um, it's an anti-inflammatory. But then the, the uses of hemp for cancer, what I've studied, because of my book, Cancer Step Outside the Box, and the number of cancers, there's about a dozen different cancers that have been studied in depth with, medi with medicinal marijuana, with hemp. And so the, the studies that, from brain cancer to prostate cancer to pancreatic cancer, uh, uterine cancer, cervical cancer, prostate cancer, it's amazing. Okay, so what is in uh, hemp yeah. that it's this THC, correct? Well, there's, there's uh, chemicals that are called cannabinoids. Right. THC is uh, short for delta-9 tetrahydrocannabinol. I'm one glad you said it because I couldn't. That's the only time I'll get it right. I'm glad I got it right. So that's the one, TH, THC is the one cannabinoid that everyone's familiar with. That's right. the one that's psychoactive, and that's the one that gets you high if you smoke it. Okay. But there's other cannabinoids. One, one is called CBD, cannabidiol, and it's very uh, medicinally used. It's, it, it, there's, not, there's no psychoactive component of CBD. So what do they do, extract these, to they, make tinctures, yeah, they or make you can tinctures. make tea out of? You can make tea. You can eat it. It's a great superfood. You're into raw. A lot of people yes. use raw hemp in their well, do you get high off of hemp if you eat it as a superfood? No, well, or just the seeds. You, well, you've you... got to heat. You've got to heat the THC to make it become psychoactive. So people that that eat the plant, they put in a smoothie. You know, they're super green smoothies. Right. You're not going to get high off of that because you didn't superheat it. But is it then if you put it in the smoothie like that, is it good prevention to cancer? It is. It's very well. It's it's got a perfect ratio of omega three to uh, to six fatty acids. It's okay. got a it's got more GLA gamma linolenic acid than any other plant. So it's got some really great fats. You're, you're well aware of the importance of good right, fats right. in your diet. Yeah. So hemp has, it's, it's a perfect superfood to eat but it's also medicinal. I just never understood why hemp had gotten such a bad rap and yeah. now I understand that it was really politically motivated by somebody who owned basically trees and didn't want to be in competition with the hemp to make yeah. paper. And yet throughout the years after that so many people suffered because of that. Yeah. So I, I guess it's actually a good thing that people are coming around a little bit. It is. I'm really encouraged about the different legislation in different states that are trying to legalize medicinal hemp because of the fact that it is so good. It is so, it, it, it's not just a superfood. It's not just great for industrial uses, as we've mentioned, but it is really, it's a really good medicine. Thank you so yeah. much for coming on, Ty. I really appreciate you being here. Thank you, Carol. <laughs>